We're here in the city of Amsterdam to discover the inspiration behind the works of one of the greatest artists who ever lived. So join TV Tricht as we dive into the short, prolific yet tragic life of Vincent van Gogh. start off with you introducing yourself and what you do for the Van Gogh Museums. Absolutely. So I'm Brett Hewitt. I'm a junior researcher here at the Van Gogh Museum. That means I work with two senior um, Van Gogh experts in researching the life of Vincent Van Gogh and his work. So you research the life of Vincent Van Gogh? Yes, it's always the life and the work of Vincent Van Gogh because both these um, elements are very important. Um, researching this artist particularly because we know so much about the life uh, of Vincent van Gogh. If someone were to be visiting a museum, how does the life and the work correlate in what you see and you know, what you experience in the museum? I think here in the museum um, it is um, chronologically, but we do start out with all the self-portraits to really um, give an insight into how he worked, but also uh, the way he thought about art and um, uh, his artistic process. So I think um, the focus is very much on the art, um, but through that we try to tell you a little bit about um, his life and his work also because we know a lot um, about it through his letters um, and we do have some of those on the second floor um, which also really give an insight. A lot of people who come to a museum, especially one of a renowned artist like Vincent van Gogh, are expecting to see art and to witness art. Is there something that's going on in here that when you leave, it's totally unexpected? That's a difficult question for me to say because, uh, to answer, because um, obviously I never leave here like someone would um, who's visiting for the first time. But I do think van Gogh is a very particular uh, artist who. Uh, has the ability to move people. He's very inspiring. His story of starting his career very late at 27 and dying at 37 and still accomplishing so much even though um, no one really believed in him apart from a few people like his brother Theo um, is very inspiring to a lot of people, especially if you're struggling yourself or doubting something. Um, it can really be an inspiration, I think. As a researcher, Brechia, is there any particular piece here that kind of reflects the the state of mind Vincent was at when he when when he realized that he wasn't being accepted or recognized as an artist. Is that a piece or a series of pieces, a time period which reflects this? 
I think um, I think the potato eaters maybe uh, is such a such a piece in a way because for Vincent he worked very long on this piece um, and for him it was really a pivotal moment in his career where he thought um, I'm doing a group portrait and a very important piece he studied it a lot beforehand and then uh, the response um, wasn't as good as he had hoped um, so that was a real um, disappointment for him. But I think the most important thing with Vincent Van Gogh is that he kept on going even though um, uh, other people doubted him or his success wasn't uh, apparent yet in the art market. Uh, he just kept on working um, and that's the result of it, um, which we see here every day. Yes, so we have a series of blossom paintings. Um, uh, blossom was a very important theme for Vincent van Gogh, especially once he started working in the south of France. Um, he moved there from Paris and um, when he arrived it was still winter, but the spring came and uh, with it all the blossoms. Um, and for Van Gogh, blossoms really symbolize um, happiness and um, a new spring. Um, and he was uh, going frantically at work um, to paint all of these. And so he started a series of blossoms and we have three beautiful um, blossoms in the museum um, that really also belong together. Uh, we know that he meant for those three to, to be shown together. What's the connection? What when you say? was meant to be shown together, that was his intention? It was his intention, yes. Is it because he wrote about this? Yes. Okay. He even draws, sometimes draws, uh, little uh, sketches of the paintings and put, puts them next to each other, or talks about series of paintings, or um, uh, he even in the south of France um, is thinking of a whole group uh, that he's calling the Décoration for a house, so he really uh, does think in a larger so much in his lifetime as an artist and after he passed away and that's when his whole effort went into actually trying to salvage all the work that he did and to be able to gain recognition as an artist. How did that happen actually? Um, I think uh, that actually happened uh, quite naturally because it's always believed that during his life um, no one knew him or he didn't sell anything, but actually during the uh, last couple of years, he did uh, start um, participating in um, exhibitions and uh, an important article was published about him by a French uh, man called Aurier. And that really were the first steps to his recognition, I think, which already happen happened during his life. Unfortunately, he passed away very young, but in the years after, slowly, um, a lot more people started recognizing his work for, for what it was. And of course, um, his brother Theo, who he had sent all of his paintings to in Paris, passed away just uh, right after Vincent. But his wife um, started uh, um, lending all the paintings for exhibitions, selling them, and because she did such a good job in um, spreading the word about Vincent Van Gogh, I think we, that's why we know so much about him also. And all of his paintings are all over the world today. There's a lot left to research actually, uh, especially because there are so many paintings and letters. Uh, there's never just one single uh, thing. It's always tied in with uh, many works spread around the world. Um, so I think uh, we are working on uh, a catalogue right now, um, focusing on the last period in France, uh, studying every painting in detail in the collection. So even that we hadn't uh, 
really done before. And that includes both technical research, and all the materials and the painting technique, but also art historical um, dating and finding reasons why he painted certain subjects. So there's really still a lot of um, more research to do. And, and on a little personal note, before you started working here, was there any aspect of Vincent Pakov that you were most keen to discover and find out? Um, yes, yeah, so the question we just um, answered about his reputation and how he became such a success, that's something I was interested in and doing research about before I arrived here at the museum. Um, but I'm, I'm focusing on a lot of different things right now and I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it very much. Okay, any advice to anyone who might be interested in delving into the arts and uh, working in this area? Um, Go and see many, many exhibitions and museums because I think through really looking at the paintings closely uh, and not on a, in a catalogue but really seeing them in real life, you can learn a lot more than just from a book. Wonderful. There's so many interesting paintings. I have to say, um, I, I do personally really like the French period, as do uh, a lot of people. Um, but that might also be because I have to focus more on my research into the earlier works. Almond Blossom is a family favourite because this is the painting that um, Van Gogh made for the birth of uh, Theo's son, so his nephew. Um, and that's such a, an important family piece that he really gave for the birth of the son that I know that the Van Gogh family is still very attached to it. As Trecht is in the Betuwe, it feels like it was almost meant to be that TV Trecht could take this opportunity to explore the region's connections to one of Holland's most famous and beloved painters. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the life of Vincent van Gogh. On behalf of TV Trecht, thank you for watching and goodbye. Goodbye.